We turn now to the shepherd's story and we find that in Luke's Gospel and the second chapter. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. And when they'd seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they'd heard and seen which were just as they had been told. They were terrified, freaked out. And it's not surprising because they had a predictable task. They're on the night shift. May I suggest probably a little boring. There's a reason why we encourage each other to count sheep when we cannot sleep because the process can be helpfully sleep inducing. And then suddenly, the heavens split wide open and there is this vista of partying, celebrating angels and the news. A saviour has been born to you, a sign to you and to all, he'll be for all the people. In the midst of their predictability, their tedium, God breaks in to them. Now they were shepherds. Shepherds were not celebrated in those days. People thought of them as being disreputable. Often they would steal sheep or take their flocks onto land that did not belong to them. And these shepherds were officially designated as sinners. When we read in the Bible that Jesus uh, spent time eating with uh, tax collectors and sinners, it's, it's not a phrase that just means mildly naughty people. There were trades that were officially designated by the religious authorities as being sinful sinner trades, like members of the medical profession. We celebrate them today as heroes, not, not so in Jesus' time. Hairdressers, for some reason, tax collectors, workers with leathers, leather and, and butchers and jewelers and shepherds, and, and by the way, all Gentiles officially declared as sinners, stamped with stigma. But it was to them that the angels appeared. Right from the start, we see that those who would have been considered to be on the outside of the possibility of grace and love are drawn in, invited in and invited to respond to the good news. Some years ago, I went into a restaurant Sunday lunchtime after church, and as I walked into the restaurant, a, a table of around eight people waved at me and beckoned me over, and, and that happens quite a bit. There are quite a few people in our city who go to our church, and I don't know all of them, and even though I didn't recognize these people, I just assumed that they were from our congregation. So I wandered over and said hi, they said hi, and I started to blether on fairly mindlessly. And after a couple of minutes or so, I began to sense some discomfort around the table. So I, I stopped and I said, um, you don't know me, do you? And one of them bravely said, never seen you before in our lives. I said, but, but you waved at me, you called me over when I came in. They said we were we were waving at the chap behind you and I said, I am so sorry, I will go away now forever. They weren't waving at me, they were waving at the chap behind me. And I think sometimes we can feel like that when it comes to God and God's love. We hear that God loves the world, 
but getting a sense that he really loves us is more difficult, particularly if because of our own failures or because of the words of others, we've been, if you will, officially stamped with stigma and we've been told that we're no good, that we'll never amount to anything, that we don't have any value. And the story of the shepherds is a story of God inviting, beckoning the people that had been so excluded by harsh religion. God invites us, you, me, whatever our history, whatever our brokenness and our failures, he invites us to step out from underneath the dark clouds of shame and condemnation and be invited to go to Bethlehem, figuratively speaking, to come and discover the joy that is in Christ. The message of Christmas, unwrapping it together today, the message is not just for the woman or the man behind you, it's for you and it's for me. Go on then. Right, Colin. Now, we can go through this later with the tea towels and the dressing gowns if needs be. Mm. I just want to focus really now on the dialogue, if I may. Right. Uh, so, um, you will be shepherd too, Colin. Mm -hmm. Alan is three, and I thought I might as well be shepherd number one. <laughs> well, I thought you might be. <laughs> now, I see shepherd two as a little bit anxious. He's, he's nervous. He's unsure of the whole situation. Yeah, I know the feeling. Yeah. Mm. He's somewhat embarrassed, really. A little sheepish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Colin, very yeah, good, yeah. most comical. Well, you know me, I'm all for improv as we go. You know, yeah. I was uh, three years at the Betty Booston uh, School of Dance. Uh, not much you can teach me about improv or the cha-cha-cha for that matter. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I can assure you of that. Now, Alan, please, um, through here, if you would, quickly. Alan, yes, on my way. <laughs> Right, Alan Shepherd three, if you will, please. Yes, Alan Shepherd. I've been doing a bit of research on him, actually. He was the second man in space, you know, first American as well. Uh, May 1961, just one month after Yuri Gagarin. And then in 1971, he walked on the surface of the moon, Apollo uh, 14. Amazing life, Healy, don't you think? So? Yeah. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Alan. But it's a hillside shepherd that we need, not a NASA astronaut. Oh, well, I mean, there also, yeah, it is quite an astronomical thing, though, isn't it? Yes. I mean, if you think about it. What do you mean? Bad stomach, you mean? Uh, Gastronomical? Oh, <laughs> astronomical, Alan. Oh. Following the star. I see. Yeah. Uh, right. Indeed, and we were visited by heavenly bodies. So we can move on, please. And uh, scripts. Okay. Halfway down page 17, Got please. Yeah. Alan, as I indicated, you are Shepherd 3, Colin is 2, and, uh, and I'm an angel, <laughs> as well as Shepherd 1. <laughs> right, it had to be you. <laughs> I'm open to folks improvising, you know, as you feel led, not That's you, you Alan. Eh? Um, not you. Oh. <clears throat> right. <clears throat> and they were in a field, shepherds looking after their sheep by night. Come by, come by, <laughs> come on. Come by, come by. This way, come on, Shep. Alan. Petra, Goldie. What are you doing, Alan? Alan? Frida, hey, I'm improvising. I said not you, though, Alan. Oh, Thank you, it's too much. An angel of the Lord appeared to the shepherds. Be not Ooh. afraid. They were. Not surprised. <clears throat> I bring good news of great joy for all the people. The DFS half-price sale has been extended until Boxing Day. Today, in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel praising God and singing melodiously. One, two, one, two, three, four. Glory. And eventually the angels left. <laughs> Thank you. The shepherd said, Let us go to Bethlehem. Hey, let us go to Bethlehem. Let us go to Bethlehem. Let us go oh, no, to Bethlehem. We've done that. Let us go to Bethlehem um, and see this thing that has happened that the Lord has told us about. Yes, let's do that. What is that? <laughs> the baby has baby. been born. Oh, baby. right. <laughs> and then we'll, uh, we'll hurry up to Bethlehem and you stay here and yes. look after the sheep. Am I you own? stay. Yeah. yeah. I don't get to. No. Michael Collins, eh? <laughs> Michael Collins, you know. One of the astronauts, Apollo 11. He had to remain in the module, you see, circling the moon while Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, they... They landed on the moon. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. 
planted the flag, got all the glory. Michael Collins was left in the capsule on his own. Nobody remembers him. Mm. They couldn't have done it without him, you see. Oh. I'm a bit like him, I suppose. <laughs> left here, looking after the sheep, looking up at the sky, the stars. Someone had to stay in the capsule. Yeah. There's always John Glenn, of course. John Glenn? John Glenn, yes, you know. He's an astronaut. He, he, he circled the Earth as well. Way back, 60s, I think. And then in 1998, he went into space at the age of 77. Can you imagine that? She's had 77. <laughs> There's hope for you yet, Alan. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> And as he came back to Earth, he looked out of his window and, and wiped it a bit and looked down at our Earth. And he said these words, he said, to look at our wonderful creation there and to think that there is no God whatsoever. Well, to me, that's impossible.